Barakat Yahweh. Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Racha Kodash. Welcome to another live lesson. The name of this one is Judgment of the Great Whore. <clears throat> and uh, pretty much this lesson is going to be centered around uh, mostly Revelation, the 19th chapter. Uh, Lord's will, we can go into a little bit of the 18th chapter to uh, set it up. And uh, this has been a mystery to the world because the Lord held back this mystery. It's not very many people that know. Now they do, but there was there were at one point there were not many people that knew that America was Babylon the Great, that great whore. You know? But now that the end is coming closer, the mysteries are being revealed, the seals are being opened, you know, the world is starting to understand and to see that that America is Babylon the Great, even though you still have some, you know, um, diehards that try to push the Vatican as being Babylon the Great, which it's not. Even though it plays a part, you know, in the whole beast system, because that's the religious part of it. But that representation of the Roman Catholic Church in prophecy is dealing with the false prophet and not the whore herself. <clears throat> um, before I get started, um, I was watching Elder Pastor's video that he did going into the Hebrew. You know, and it's true, not a lot of people watch videos like that because to them it's boring. But it's a part of our, it's a part of our inheritance. You know, it's a part of our nation, our, our language. You know, you can't have a nation you know, without a government and without language and so on and so forth, laws. So the Hebrew is very important. Uh, one thing that I do notice from time to time, brothers, when they give their salutations, you know, they give the salutation to the Akim, and then they give their salutation to the Akwathium. It's not Akwathium. Akwath is plural, whether you have one sister or 20 sisters. So the way you would say the sisters plural would be Akwath. Or the way you would say singular is Akwath, not Akwathium. Yum at the end of a word makes it masculine plural. <clears throat> you know, and I know brothers are going to keep saying it because it's, you know, sometimes certain things you say so much that it's kind of hard to, you know, part with. Just like, uh, you know, when you keep, when brothers keep calling Uncle Tom, pe you know, calling people Uncle Toms, Uncle Tom was really the good guy. It was really Sambo that was the the wicked one, you know. And really, if anything, you should call people sellouts or Sambos. But they're going to keep saying Uncle Tom because that's something that's been said over and over and over and over again. So it's going to be hard to break that cycle. Um, another thing, too, uh, with uh, my name, Orion Lab, I actually chose it that way. Arayim, which Araya is uh, is lion. Arayim is lions, plural. And then the lab is heart, lion's heart. I actually chose it that way back then, you know, Arayim lab, you know, which which would be more than one lion. You know, I actually chose the name that way. Uh, and then I found out maybe, I'm not sure how long, maybe a month or a couple of weeks you know, maybe a couple of weeks later or a month because we were going back and forth to the school at One West that this one individual called himself Arialab. And he called himself Arialab or Lion's Heart because or Lion Heart because of the movie with Van Damme. You know, I had just chose a name. You know, I don't know why I chose it that way. It just, you know, happened to be, you know, Lion's Heart, you know, uh, um, plural, more than one lion, Lion's Heart. Um... So let's get into this chapter, you know, because this chapter or this uh, topic, the judgment of the great whore, it's something, you know, that's looming. You know, it's out there, you know, it's um, happening, you know, the moral decay of this American system is falling apart. You know, they said that when they first were established, they were established upon Christian principles, so-called Christian principles, which really when you go into the inception of it and the 
rituals that these uh, so-called founding fathers were, go were, were doing was pretty much nothing more than lightly veiled witchcraft. You know, they were, a lot of them were masons, you know, and they were into, you know, the pretty much the occult. They really wasn't into, you know, the scriptures as far as being a follower of Yahweh Shai. So this is the main reason, one of the reasons why the Lord is going to destroy this place, because they made the world believe that they were noble people and they really are nothing but the devil that the Bible speaks of. And when you read the book of Revelation, you know, it's a story that is continuous. It's the same story told over and over again. I know you've heard in the past Elder Pastor mention how High Priest Ari I used to say it all the time that the book of Revelation and the prophecies were pretty much the same thing, you know, just taught uh, or said over and over again in different forms, different fashions, using different symbolisms. You know, and this is why most people get confused because, you know, they thinking that it's, speak, it's speaking about different um, 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 events and it's not. It's speaking about the same event, just putting a, a, a spin on it. So we're going to start off in the book of Revelation 18 and 14. Uh, it says, And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee. And all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. Why? Because America is going to be destroyed. It's not talking about because of an embargo. <clears throat> you know, you're going to get hit with an embargo. You rich nations and you, and you poor nations are going to get hit with an embargo. And you're going to be far off because you can't come to the soils of America because you won't be able to buy because they're going to put this restriction on you. No. The reason why they're going to be standing afar off is because this place is going to be destroyed. It's going to be up in smoke, you know, up in flames. It says, And the merchant of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for fear of her torment. See, because the fear of her torment is what? It's the destruction. You know, the greatest fear, you know, as they say, the greatest fear, you know, or the sum of all fears is what? Nuclear war. You know, and this is something that's been looming since the 80s and even before that, you know, but especially since the 80s, because this is when they pull out, pull a, um, a movie together back in 1983 called The Day After, which they show the events of a nuclear, you know, fallout. And everybody was somber. Everybody was nervous and scared because it was a reality back then. But the thing is that that reality never went away. It just, it just was laying dormant. But it's still uh, well and alive because it is a part of the prophecies that the Heavenly Father is going to use to destroy this place. It says weeping and wailing. Why? Because they won't be able to make any more money. The nation's religions, they, all nations have their different religions, whether it's Buddhism or, you know, or Hinduism you know, Shintoism or whatever the case may be, you know, all them different religions uh, that they have, their real main religion is money. You know, all nations' religions are money because their gods are nothing but idols. You know, then it goes on and says, and saying, alas, alas, that great city, and there's no greater city there in America, this great empire, Babylon the Great, that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Because of what? Because of the costliness of this place. You know, the great riches that this place has. And this is why when you go back to Revelation 17, it also uses that same terminology in the fourth verse. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. Now we know that it's not talking about an actual woman, although... Um, the Apostle John saw a woman in the vision, but this woman represented a particular country that would be ruling the whole entire planet Earth. And this is why we jump to the 18th verse. It says, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Now, anyone that's honest with themselves and looks or does a process of elimination uh, as far as all these nations are concerned, would have to come to the conclusion that America is this woman that reigns over the whole entire planet. Now, people will say, well, that's a city. America is a country. Yeah, but a city is as big as its citizens. 
because no matter what part of America you're from, you're still an American citizen. You know, so a citizen is as, as big as the, uh, a city is as big as its citizens. So America is a gigantic city, you know, that rules over all the people of the planet. And it says, and a woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold, gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations of filthiness of a fornication. Yeah, because they have an overabundance of everything this is why the scriptures speak about esau having more than heart could wish you know and with this um and with this um decadent lifestyle this uh this uh luxurious lifestyle they've pushed you know that cup you know of america upon all nations you know dealing with their democracy their ideologies, you know, just everything in general that America does that the nations are doing. There's no coincidence that all nations have skyscrapers, you know, in their countries. It wasn't like that. The first skyscraper ever built was here in America in Chicago, which was an uh, insurance company that was built 10 stories high, and that was considered the tallest building in the world at the time. I believe that was in the 1800s, you know, and it towered over all those little houses that were in the area. And then from that point on, then they started building, you know, what they call skyscrapers because they scraped the skies. All right. So all nations are following behind America in one way or, or another. So going back to Revelation 18. When we go up back to the 14th verse, it says, And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which are dainty and goodly. Now, dainty is when you get the word lipos, which is fat. You know, you know, this is why you go, people eat pizzas and burgers and, you know, and fried chicken and, you know, just things that, that are fattening. The king's food, you know, which is rich, you know, which breaks the body down eventually because it doesn't have any good substance in it to help break down the garbage that that is eaten but the word i want to focus more so is the word goodly and when we look up this word goodly right you have the word lamp lampros you know i'm lamping i'm lamping i'm cold cold lamping uh inside joke it says shining brilliant clear transparent splendid magnificent splendid things an example of luxuries or elegancies in dress or style and you see that you know that's why you have uh in new york itself you have uh seventh ave which is known as a fashion ave or fashion district or something along those lines and they have you know different um runways and shows that you know portray different um you know, clothing and the new clothing and the, you know, and the Louis Vuittons and your, you know, your different uh, name brands that are, that are, you know, um, that are um, famous today. You know, then you have your, you know, uh, accessories like your fedora hats and your different shoes and stilettos and different things of that nature. Everything that complements this luxurious lifestyle. You know, then you have your jewelry and your, you know, and everything else that goes along with it. And then once you get your your clothes right, you, you're going to want what? You're going to want a nice whip, you know, a nice expensive whip. You're going to want, you know, a nice expensive home. <laughs> you're going to want to eat, Salakia. You're going to want to eat at the nice fancy restaurants, you know, because it's a status quo that that is held here in America. All right, so going back and jumping back down to the 16th verse and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stone and pearls. For in one hour so great riches has come to naught. See? So this is um, the destruction of America, Babylon the Great. And then it's going to lead into the 19th chapter. And, you know, I, I, I had to start a, into the 18th chapter so that it can make sense once we go into the 19th chapter of why it was written in the fashion that it was written. It says, And every shipmaster 
And all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. And they stood afar off not because they were hit with an embargo or some restriction, financial restriction to where they won't be able to buy or sell here. Rich nations and, and poor nations, you know, bullshit. The reason why they were standing afar off was because of the great conflagration, which is nothing more than a fancy word that means a great fire. You know, and that's why they had to stand the far off. It wasn't a restriction as far as financial restriction. It was a restriction because of the great judgment that the Most High is bringing upon America, Babylon the Great. So that foolishness that's being taught at the IUIC, that this, that the reason why these merchants were far off is because they got hit with an embargo or, or some type of financial restriction. They need to cut that out. They need to cut that shit out. They're just, they're just winging shit because you have, to, when, when you teach a lie, you have to keep adding lies to it. And it never adds up. Anyway, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning. This is why they were standing afar off because they saw the smoke of her burning saying, What city is like unto this great city? And there is no city or no country in the world that is like America. Bar none. This is why everybody want, wanted to come to America at one point or another. Everybody was told that the streets were paved in gold. But one thing that did happen when these nations, especially these nations came here, not Jake, but when the different nations came here, they were able to cultivate, you know, uh, uh, um, a life for their peoples, for their families. They were able to set up businesses. You know, they were able to prosper. They were able to get rich. Buy homes, buy cars, you know, buy fancy things like the Americans. You see? And that's why they committed fornication with this whore. It says, and they cast dust on their heads and cried weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein it was made rich, all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she made desolate. If I'm not mistaken, that word costliness is the word emporium. If I'm not mistaken. Nope, it's not. I am mistaken. It's to me, to me, old taste. To me, old taste. Preciousness, costliness, and abundance of costly things. Metaphorically worth excellence. Expensiveness. Magnificence. Costliness. And you see it. You know, you go to certain... You go to certain um, restaurants and you might want to order a, a burger, you know. I'm not saying that they sell that there, but you might want to order a burger. That burger will be $500, you know. You might want to order a steak. The steak is $1,700. And that's not speaking about, you know, the trimmings, you know, the asparagus and the pump frites. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord It says And they cast dust on their heads And cried weeping and wailing Saying alas alas That great city Wherein were made rich All that had ships In the sea By reason of her costliness For in one hour Is she made desolate See One hour is she made desolate Rejoice over her Thou heaven And ye holy apostles And prophets For the most high Hath avenged you On her so when we see these judgments coming upon this place, we're supposed to be, <laughs> yeah, that's right, the brother got it, law-abiding citizen, yep. Um, when, when we see these things happening, you know, this is, we're supposed to be rejoicing because this is the Heavenly Father avenging us on this place. So when we see this place going down, we're not supposed to be sad. You know, we're not supposed to be, you know, or, you know, uh, uh, upset because this place is falling apart No we're supposed to be happy man You know to us this place can't fall fast enough You know and then one The, uh, the other day uh, Either yesterday I think it was I was thinking about this Man this fucking devil can't fall fast enough And then a the thought came into my mind what, you know, I wish I said I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven And I was like ooh You know So that that that's heavy man it says, And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. 
Yeah, because it only makes sense that this place that was established upon such great violence and bloodshed should go out in such a fashion. Because there is no other way to clean this land. You got to remember, this land is polluted with the blood of the saints. You know, beginning with Gad, Reuben, um, Issachar, and then the other tribes, you know, in the other uh, um, uh, Central America, Mexico, South America, Canada, so on and so forth. But then here also in America, you had what? Judah that was brought up here. And, and suffered the bloodshed that they suffered. I was watching that movie Antebellum. I couldn't really watch it because the first half hour was pretty good, you know, going into the, into the, um, um, going into the um, slavery part. And then it gets modernized, you know, which pretty much showing you the same thing, that it's modernized and that still even in the modern world, Jake is still slaves. It's just, you know, on a higher, you know, uh, they're not dressed, you know, all ragtag and picking cotton, but they are picking cotton. And, you know, pretty much the, the dress that they have, even though it looks uh, expensive, it's still sackcloth. Anyways, it says, And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. Yeah, because you still see construction going up. You still hear the different um, businesses start off in the morning, you know, um, whether it's car manufacturing, you know, whether it's whatever, you know, they they make, you know, f uh, food processing and all that other crap. That's going to all be shut down. You ain't going to have no more electricians, no more carpenters, no more plumbers. It says, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in the air because the grinding is going to cease because America is going to be up in smoke. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. Yeah. And this is why you have shipping containers. And then the, the major um, way... That goods get around are, is by ships. And there's no other nation on the planet where ships are sent to at such a phenomenal rate than here in America. You know, they're not sending all of these different ships to the Vatican. First of all, the Vatican would be overwhelmed by the uh, amount of ships. You know that they would they would be sending there in order to for that place to be Babylon the Great to make the world uh, rich, and people might say, well, "Well, look what's happening in America." Yeah, but that's all that those um uh, those bottlenecks and stuff that are happening are being done on purpose. You know, you know it's uh, engineered. This is not something that's just happened to happen because. You know, there's too many ships coming in and they don't have enough ports. No, they're doing that on purpose. Because they're putting a squeeze on the uh, supply chain. It says, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. See? So this costliness what came with what? With sorcery. And everyone was deceived into accepting your ways. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Yeah, because there's a lot of bloodshed here that took place in America. Now that we see the destruction, now we come into the book of Revelation, the 19th chapter, which Revelation, the 19th chapter, is after the destruction happened. And this is what you know, the sentiment of the saints, you know, in Revelation 19. It says the four, four, fourfold hallelujah, which hallelujah means praise Yahweh. It says, and after these things, I heard a voice of much people in heaven saying, hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our power. Why? Because they were happy. They were elated that the Lord finally uh, brought 
the judgment upon America, Babylon the Great. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore. He hath judged America, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication. See, because they corrupted the earth. They didn't just corrupt the people that were citizens of America or uh, South America, Central America, Mexico, and uh, Canada. No, they corrupted the whole earth. And hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Yeah, because there's a lot that these devils still have to pay for. Then after this place is destroyed and the blood of the saints is avenged. Then the people of Esau and the other nations that come back. Then they have to start to begin to pay for what they've done. And that's why they're going to be they're going into captivity for a period of a thousand years. And they said that we're going to rule them with a rod of iron. So the word corrupt is a word uh fihito or fi let me see. Strong's G fifty three fifty one. Thyro. Thyro. Man, I was way off the mark. Thyro. Thyro. It says to corrupt, to destroy. Yeah, because when you take something out of its original form, you destroy it. You destructure it. And that's what these devils have done. You know, they've corrupted the world. You know, they give you Christianity, but the Christianity that they give you is nothing more than lightly veiled witchcraft. And the democracy that they give you, it's corrupt. You know, and everything else that comes along with Esau's, you know, philosophies or his ways you know, of so-called prospering. It says, In the opinion of the Jews, the temple was corrupted or destroyed when anyone defiled or in the slightest degree damaged anything in it, or if its guardians neglected their duties. Yeah, and they do that here in America. They make you neglect your duties to Yahweh Bashem Shai, especially you Israelites, to lead away a Christian church from that state of knowledge and holiness in which it ought to abide. Yeah, because they're saying that they're Christians, but their teachings are something totally corrupt. You know, and this is why you have Jake in that plantation Christianity spirit mindset. It says to be destroyed, to perish in an ethical sense, to corrupt, deprave. Yeah, and this place has been a place that has depraved people. Uh, so it goes on to say, and again, they said, hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever and ever because it's going to uh, go up for a long period of time. So this is right after the destruction of Revelation 18. That's why I said no craftsman shall be heard, you know, no uh, musician, you know, no bride, no bridegroom, you know, so on and so forth. They won't be able to buy or sell here anymore because it's going to be destroyed. It says, And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped the Most High that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our power, all ye his servants, you Israelites, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And it's talking about people. It's not talking about great nations and small nations. You know, rich nations and poor nations. No, it's talking about people. Because these guys keep inserting that into the scriptures. That it's talking about rich nations and poor. It didn't say that. It said all, both small and rich, uh, both small and uh, uh, great, rich and poor. It's nothing. It has nothing to do with nations. It's talking about the peoples of these nations. That's why I said that it's going to come upon all the people that dwell upon the earth to try them. You know? It says, and I heard it, and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as a voice of many waters, and as a voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord power omnipotent reigneth. So Yahweh is going to reign. And then you're going to have Yahweh Shai. That's why the scriptures say that in the kingdom of heaven, the Most High and Yahweh Shai are going to be the temple. Because it's, it said that there was no temple there. Why? Because the Most High's presence and Yahweh Shai's presence was, is going to actually be there. Because the purpose for the tabernacle and, you know, and, the, and, and, uh, 
And that whole setup was so in the Holy of Holies, where you had the Ark of the Covenant, you had the cherubims, you had the mercy seat, the Heavenly Father's presence would appear there once a year to speak with the high priest, you know, to atone for the sins of Israel. But we're not going to we're going to be perfect. So we're not going to need any atonement anymore. <coughs> so the presence of the Heavenly Father and Yahweh Shai are going to be there. <laughs> Salakia. It says, and I heard a voice as, and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters. These are the angels. And as the voice of mighty thunderings saying, hallelujah, for the Lord power omnipotent reigneth. You know, dealing with the saints also that are in the heavens. <laughs> then it goes on to say, marriage of the lamb. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come. And his wife hath made herself ready, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Yeah, and this is the, um, the process that's going on right now, you know, where, you know, brothers out there, you know, certain sisters out there are being bidden. To the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's mainly the men, but the women, you know, they're going to be a part of it. Because the men are the ones that's going to be married to the Lamb, to Yahweh Shai. Matthew 22 and 1, parable of the marriage feast. So it's a marriage supper of the Lamb. It says, And Yahweh Shai answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. The king is the Most High, the son is Jehoshai, the bride are the elect of the nation of Israel. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Yeah, because when you go out on these streets, you call to Jake, and Jake doesn't take heed, they're being called. But they're not answering the call. You know. So it says again. He sent forth other servants saying. Tell them which are bidden. Behold I have prepared my dinner. So these lessons. That are being put out there. Are the plates of food. That are being given. For this dinner. This supper. My oxen and my fattenings are killed. You can read about that. In Proverbs the ninth chapter. Where it speaks about wisdom and you know and how it's adorned like a dinner. It says, uh, are killed and all things are ready, come unto the marriage. Yeah, because you can't have a marriage, you know, without having food. You know? I mean, I don't know the particular I know I believe it's the reception, you know, you have the actual ceremony, and then after, you know, you have you know, the feast, you know, you eat, you know, and drink, you know. It says, but they made light of it, yeah, because they didn't take heed, you know. Because to, to most people out here, it seems futile, you know. It seems futile because they don't, they don't see a far off. They can't see a far off, you know, <clears throat> the kingdom of heaven. All they see is what they see right now, the here and now, and whatever they can do to better their situation right now. But they don't understand that the time of Jacob's trouble is coming, you know, concentration camps, martial law, you know, and eventually, you know, the destruction. But before all of that, they're going to push heavy that karagma, which is the MOTB. It says, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. Yeah, because Jake, they, they're going about their life. You know, they make excuses as to why they can't serve the Lord. You know, because they got stuff they got to do here. You know. So when the time comes, they're not going to be protected. It says, and the remnant took his servants and treated them spitefully and slew them. Yeah, because they killed the prophets. You know. Going all the way back to the beginning of time. All the way up till now. If they were able to right now, 
they would kill, you know, the uh, the um, prophets right now. Which in a sense they are by, by the slanders that they're saying, you know, but if they could, they would physically do it. It says, but when the king heard thereof, when the Most High heard, he was wroth. He was pissed off because they entreated his servants wrong and sent forth his armies, which are the angels, and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Thus saith he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Right, because they didn't take heed. It says, Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find, bid to the marriage. And this is why you still go out and teach, you know, whether they're here or whether they forbear. Because the Lord is going to eventually reach the, um, reach the elect. It says, So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. You know, and this is the scary part, you know, that, you know, you don't know who's part of the good and who's part of the bad. But we do the best that we can in the hopes that, you know, we be part of the good, part of the elect. It says, and when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? Yeah, because only the elect are really going to be, you know, allowed to stay. You know, anyone else, like the scriptures speak about in Jude, those that are crept in on the wares, they're going to be moved out of the way. You know? It says, and he was speechless because he didn't have anything to say because he wasn't a part of it. Then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few chosen. So that's dealing with the marriage supper of the Lamb. <clears throat> and that's what we read in here, that after the destruction, that's when the union is going to come. Yahweh I told the disciples, after he ate uh, bread, broke bread with them and, and drank the wine, he said that he will henceforth not drink it again, Till he drinks it new with them in the kingdom of heaven. And this is a part of that new drinking of the wine. Which is the marriage supper of the lamb. You know the reward for those that endure to the end. It says and he saith unto me right. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the lamb. See. And he saith unto me. These are the true sayings of the most high. Because there's no other place where we want to be. You know? This is it. You know, this is this is this is the greatest honor that anyone could ever have is to be invited to this great marriage supper of the Lamb. It says, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said, said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy ser thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the Most High, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. And that's why we're constantly pushing prophecy, because that's what the spirit has us doing. Because the prophecy is where it's at. Prophecy is where it's at. That's a lesson right there. The coming of Yahweh Shai, oh, Hamashiach. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon it was called Faithful, and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. See, because they think that the Heavenly Father is all love and Yahweh Shai is all love, and you know that they're, you know, they wouldn't hurt a fly. Man, you don't know, you, you don't know the Heavenly Father, man. You don't know Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is coming to do business. You know, when you read Corinthians, it tells you how he went through and was jacking Jake up back then because they were being fresh. You know, <laughs> they were being fresh. All right, let's go real quick to Isaiah chapter 11 and 3. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. This is dealing with Yahweh Shai. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, 
neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Yeah, because eventually there was going to be a judgment coming anyway. All he came to do was to give the message of the Heavenly Father. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with what? With the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. <laughs> Woo! Boy, it's going to be. So it says that in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Now let's go from there. To the book of Second Ezra. You know, this is why the scriptures say that that the words of the Most High are quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. This is uh Second Ezra thirteen and three, and I beheld and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven, that's Yahweh Shai and the angels, and when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him, cause they're gonna boy, he say he cu he's coming. In, you know, traveling in the in the in his strength, he will not meet these devils as a man. So it's gonna be vicious. It says, and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, see, remember we just read that in uh in Isaiah, the eleventh chapter, then he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. He said, and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice. Like as the earth faileth when it faileth the fire. Yeah, because that fire is 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 strong, man. And you know, even though you might have something that might burn for a while, eventually it succumbs to that burning. And after this I beheld and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number. From the four winds of heaven. And this is what we're reading in the second part of Revelation, the 19th chapter. To subdue the man that came out of the sea, meaning out of space. But I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it, which, cause, which was a great big chariot. But I would have seen the region or place whereunto the hill was graven, and I could not. And after this I beheld, and lo, all they that were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid, and yet durst fight. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war, but only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire. That's the, that concentrated laser. It says, and out of his lips a flaming breath. And out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. And they were all mixed together. The blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest. And fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight. And burned them up every one. So that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude. Nothing was to be perceived but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this I was afraid. Because it's going to be very, very vicious. You know, and just shows you just by the opening of his mouth, he ain't going to be, he ain't going to have no lance and no sword, you know. This is all done through spiritual powers, you know. That's <coughs> like This is all done through spiritual powers. And this is what's going to make this war so great. Because these devils have nothing to fight against that. They have nothing to ward that off. They have nothing. They, ha they don't have a chance in heaven or hell, so to speak, you know, to be able to battle. Only thing that they're going to do is they, the Lord is going to put the spirit in them, harden their heart to fight. But they know that they, they're going to lose. <laughs> His eyes were as a flame of fire. Just dealing with Yahweh Shai, and on his head were many crowns. Why? Because he gonna he's gonna take down all the nations of the planet, all these different kings of the earth. They're all gonna subdue themselves because remember, every knee shall bow to Yahweh Shai. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And if this is the case, then 
That's his name. But what name did he give us to call upon for salvation? Yahweh Shai. That's the name that's given to us. So if he has another name when the kingdom is established, hey, so be it. You know, but as you read further down, it says, And he was clothed with the vesture dipped in blood, going back to Isaiah 63, Isaiah 34, and his name is called the word of the Most High. Why? Because he comes in the volume of the book. You know, so any way you slice it, we already have the name. And I don't understand why someone, a whole group of people would fight so vehemently against this name. You no, know, pretty much they the enemies of the cross. You know? And the enemies of the cross begins with the name. You know? Israel united in Christ. Come on, man. The man's name is Yahweh Shai. That's our savior. You know? Everybody wants respect, you know, on their name. Even that big oaf, you know, Abiyala, you know, he was uh going to pounce on Barak because Barak called uh, Bishop Nathaniel, called him Nate. And they have history together. Them, them men were friends back then. So if they call themselves that, so what? But this guy was ready to pounce. See, that's what I'm talking about. You know, you know, raising up because you didn't put no respect on his, on his bishop's name. But yet the Heavenly Father's name and Yahweh Shai's name, y'all put no respect on that. You know, and this is why the Lord is angry, man. And that pride is a motherfucker, man. That pride is a motherfucker. It says, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Because they're coming to do battle, man. But they're, gonna, they're coming in style, baby. It says, And out of his mouth, once again, we keep reading about the mouth. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And that's what he's coming to do. Every time you read throughout the scriptures, the Old Testament, New Testament, when Yahweh Shai comes back, he's coming back to do battle with these armies. <coughs> you got the word Armageddon, Harmagadwan, Mountain of the Troops. You have the word Jehoshaphat, Yahweh Shapat. Yahweh's judgment. You know? This is the this is the final analysis, the final judgment is to burn up once America's being destroyed simultaneously those uh armies of Esau and the other nations are going to be getting burnt up also. It says and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress. We read about the winepress yesterday. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty power. Because the Lord is, is, is he going he gonna to let Yahweh Shai get busy. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written. And it's not talking about no goddamn tattoo. It's just talking about uh, that on his vesture that he had on the name was written. King of kings and Lord of lords. Why? Because he's coming to conquer all of these different uh Military men slash leaders of these different nations. You know? Because you have clowns that try to justify tattoos. Oh, see, this is a, he had a, a name written on his thigh. So that means he had a tattoo. Get the fuck out of here, man. Scripture say, make no markings upon thy flesh, but the Lord is going to have a tattoo on his, on his thigh. He's fucking assholes, man. And this is why the Most High is going to destroy two-thirds of you uh, niggas out there, man. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great power. Because the Heavenly Father promised these birds a great feast, you know, at the end of this whole shit. You know, hey, because the, the birds and the animals, so they catching hell too, man. So there's going to be a whole bunch of birds, you know, different types of birds, vultures and eagles and, 
you know, that are going to be feasting on these different military men whose carcasses are going to be out there in the Middle East and wherever they drop. That you may eat the flesh of kings and of the flesh of captives and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond. It's not talking about free nations and bond nations. No, it's talking about people, both small and great. It's not talking about small nations and great nations. It's talking about people. It says, and I saw the beast and the, and the kings of the earth, the beast is NATO and the EU, and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And we read about this also in um, Revelation 17, towards the end. And Yahweh is going to smash him. Doom of the beast and the false prophet. The beast is NATO and the EU. And it's also talking about the false prophet is talking about the, the Roman Catholic Church. They're going to get taken out. And the beast was taken. <coughs> <coughs> and with him, the false prophet and pretty much the beast also represents the whole system, America included. And the beast was taken and with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which with which he deceived them. That received the mark of the beast. See? So a lot of people are going to be deceived to receive the mark. You know, the MOTB. You know, but then some will be beheaded because they won't take, you know, the uh, MOTB, Karagma. And them that worshipped his image. And his image is not the picture of Caesar Borgia. It's the whole Roman system. Everything that is comprised in the Roman system. It says, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And that's what? The nuclear missiles and the lasers from the chariots. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceedeth out of his mouth, and all fowls were filled with their flesh. Yeah, because that's the final analysis. Once this place is destroyed, these militaries are destroyed. <coughs> the birds are going to feast on these captains. So pretty much that's been the judgment of the great whore. You know, with that, I pray that your brothers and your few sisters have been uh, edified. Until the next time, I say Shalom.